recent literature in science education stresses the importance of student-centered teaching, often to the point where teacher demonstrations are frowned upon. The advantage is that they get an opportunity to handle the equipment themselves, to see the results personally themselves within a group, and they get a lot of entertainment out of this as well as learning. However, many classrooms are not equipped with sufficient apparatus for learners to carry out experiments themselves. Furthermore, when carried out in a suitable manner, teacher demonstrations can be more useful and effective than experiments carried out by learners. In these two bottles I have a solution of ammonia and a solution of hydrochloric acid. Observe. Do you notice something happening? Yes. Keep that in mind. Demonstrations have a very important place to play in the general process of a lesson. The problem is that in the past they've been overused and used inappropriately, but in the right place at the right time they do have a use. And given the fact that many schools don't have sufficient resources to do something with the whole class at one time, it's very important when you do the demonstration to have the tables and chairs or desks laid out in such a way that the kids can actually get to see what's going on properly. This video will provide teachers with an example of how to introduce new concepts by first carrying out an experiment using everyday substances. During the demonstration, learners should be encouraged to predict and explain their observations in scientific terms before being taught the relevant concepts. It's important that we find out what the learners know about the ideas in science. And one of the ways to do it is actually to set up to ask learners to predict situations and a typical experiment that learners or that teachers set up uh, involves the predict, observe, explain experiment. Referred to as POE, learners are first given an opportunity to predict the situations that occur. They will then do the experiment and observe the outcomes, and finally, they will need to give an explanation for them. This approach provides teachers with an opportunity to illustrate how scientific theory is developed. Basically, it works like this. You start off with a question about something you see in nature. The scientist then thinks of some ideas. How could this be explained? And the ideas together form what we call a hypothesis. We test the hypothesis by either designing an experiment that you can do in the laboratory, or you can just observe something if you can't. Going through this process, one has to be honest to say, is it false? In other words, does the hypothesis fail the test, or is it true? If it's true, then this can become a theory. So a theory is an accepted idea which has passed the stringent test of experiment. The theory needs to be checked by other scientists. The Results are usually published in uh, journals which are checked by other scientists so that it becomes communal knowledge and not just the idea of one person. At Topa Secondary School, the teacher is beginning a lesson to demonstrate the conductivity of ions in an aqua solution. Today we are going to investigate the effect of ions in solution. The outcomes for the learners are to express their ideas about concepts relating to ions and aqua solutions and to analyze these concepts through the observation of teacher demonstrations. It's important to have a teacher demonstration to bring out the relevant previous knowledge of students before teaching the concept. In order to complete this demonstration, the following is required. Distilled water, table salt, sugar, three beakers, a nine volt battery connected to an ammeter and two carbon electrodes. I'm going to pour some of the distilled water into this clean beaker. The objective of the demonstration is to check the electrical conductivity of three solutions, that is pure distilled water, distilled water with dissolved sugar, and distilled water with dissolved salt. Pupils should have as relevant previous knowledge uh, concepts of chemical formula, the difference between sugar and salt, a basic idea where they have some uh, understanding of the difference between 
ionic substances, covalent substances. They must have some idea that an ammeter is used to measure current. Before we do this investigation, let us hear what are some of your suggestions of what will possibly appear on the ammeter. The needle should start moving. The ammeter reading will move from the zero. It'll reach something else now. The teacher begins a demonstration by getting learners to predict the outcomes. This enables her to establish their prior knowledge. Sometimes we assume the pupil knows this and we work from them. In the meantime, the child perhaps has a completely different idea about a certain aspect. And that makes it very difficult for them to build new concept on some misunderstanding. Zero. Notice how she allows the learners to voice their opinions without questioning whether their responses are correct or not. Okay, let's take one more person. Natasha? Well, I think maybe the, it'll measure the current, ma'am, you know? Bubble up and measure the current. By recording their comments on the board, all the learners, rather than just the ones in a particular group, are able to refer back to them later. What do you think is present in the water to produce these possibilities? It's oxygen. O2. O2 is oxygen. Maybe there is some sort of ions. Once learners have made their predictions, they will observe what actually happens. Now we want to check our predictions against what is really going to happen once we place the electrodes in the water. Let us look at the ammeter once more. Madam, there's no, there's no reading on the ammeter. Our ammeter shows no reading. But our prediction was that there might be a reading. It might move from zero. There may be some current. Now that the learners have seen the demonstration, the teacher will prompt them to come up with an explanation for this result. There was no reading in the emitter because there was no current flowing at all. And the emitter, I think, is used to measure current. Ma'am, because there were no ions inside the water, ma'am. Let's put the two ideas together. The ammeter didn't show a reading because there was no current, because there were no ideas. The teacher mixes the sugar with the distilled water and again asks learners to predict if the ammeter will have a reading. Then I think it will uh, to move because sugar, has, I think sugar has ions in it because it dissolves in the water. So, Madam, I don't think it will move. Why do you think there is no movement? Madam, I don't think sugar has ions. When learners have predicted the results, the teacher will again demonstrate so that learners can observe. What do you notice about the ammeter reading class? No reading. And where's the needle? Zero. Zero. What does that mean? There's no current flowing and there's no ions. No ions. Notice how, because the experiment is being demonstrated, the progress of the experiment is more structured than it would have been if the learners had carried out the experiment themselves. The teacher is able to get learners to focus on relevant aspects of the experiment as each step is carried out. At the same time, the learners are forced to consider their own ideas about what is happening rather than just completing the experiment without any clear understanding of what is happening. Well, to a certain degree, there are certain disadvantages in that learners do not have the skills or will not be taught the skills of handling apparatus. They will not know uh, the proper technique of appara using apparatus, what apparatus to use, what precautions that should be taken. Uh, also, learners are not given the, advanta uh, the uh, advantage of making mistakes and learn from the mistakes. Back at Topper Secondary, the teacher is beginning the last part of the demonstration, that is, to test the conductivity of a salt solution.
What is the chemical formula for table salt? Sodium chloride. N-A-C-L. The salt is mixed with the distilled water and the teacher will ask learners to predict, observe and explain the results. But the magic is going to move because salt is iodated. Why do you think the needle will move? Because there's current flowing. Because there's some current flowing. Right. Notice how the learners' ideas are starting to change. They begin to reflect more on what the reasons are for what is happening and to become more precise in their explanations. Let's put it to the test. What do you notice on the ammeter? Madam, the needle moved. Okay, Shabir, why does the needle move? Because there's ions in the water. There are ions in? The salt. So our observation is needle moves. The reason he gave us is because they are ions. Now that the demonstration is complete and the results are written on the board, the teacher can discuss the findings with the learners. When we use distilled water, there was no reading on the ammeter indicating that there was no current because there were no ions yes. present. When we tested a sugar water solution, we found from our observations that there is no movement on the ammeter. And what did that indicate? There is no current and no ions. Yet when we carried out the demonstration using a salt water solution, what did we find? The needle moved. Yes, the needle moved. So what is present in a salt water solution but isn't present in distilled water or sugar water causing this difference, class? The ions are present in the salt water and not in sugar water and pasta water. What are ions? The teacher reminds learners that ions are positively and negatively charged particles. salt, like table salt, when dissolved in water, will produce ions and therefore the ammeter will show a reading. Sugar water solution has no ions. Sugar water has molecules only and therefore your sugar water solution cannot conduct a current. What are some of the other ionic salts that you think can conduct electricity? Copper sulfate. I think uh, sodium carbonate. Okay, whenever all these ionic salts are dissolved in distilled water and used in this demonstration, the ammeter will show a reading because in solution, they all have ions. In this lesson, the learners have accomplished their outcomes by expressing their ideas about concepts relating to ions and aqua solutions and analyzing these concepts through the observation of teacher demonstrations. It can branch off into so many other areas, like we can discuss ionic bonding from there, to tell them, look, these ions, they come from a section called ionic bonding, et cetera, et cetera. We can use the same idea when we go into redox reactions, where we say, look, these are the ions. They can undergo oxidation reduction, et cetera. So we can use it further there. We can also use this in the electrolysis experiment. We can use the presence of ions in electrochemistry. So there are so many sections that we can possibly link it to instead of doing isolated lessons based on the concept. Hi everyone, now that you have observed the lesson, let us talk about it. At the studio today, we have Liz from VETS, and then we have Andrew from Protech and Kanye from the Science Education Project. Let us reflect on the lesson that we have just observed. 
One of the things that came out was the teacher led the learners on a demonstrated, guided uh, uh, way of teaching. How do you find this way of, of teaching? I think it's quite important uh, sometimes for a teacher to take advantage of being able to focus learners on a particular aspect of the lesson. Um, if one always does group work, I think learners sometimes lose the main, the main points of the lesson. So it is one way of, of helping to, to focus on what the teacher wants them to focus on. Mm -hmm. But every uh, activity was sort of guided from the beginning till the end. Do you think it's a good idea to do that? Uh, one has got to strike a balance of these things. And uh, I, I think there are lots of advantages, as Liz has mentioned already. You can focus the learners in on, on certain things, uh, salient aspects of what you want them to observe and see and do and so on. Um, uh, but uh, I, I think, yeah. you know, one, one needs also to take cognizance of the fact that there's some experiments that are just uh, better done as a demonstration, you know, for convenience or because the apparatus used is so complex. Or them, it may be actually a safety precaution to do it as a demonstration, which is perfectly uh, justifiable. Um, but I think from beginning to end uh, is not a very good idea, you know. And, uh, and especially, I mean, uh, from what I saw in that particular lesson, some of the learners were seated right at the back. And there was no way they could have looked, seen the reading on the ammeter. <laughs> so I think that's a bit problematic. Uh, my own opinion, and you know, my colleagues here stand, can stand to disagree with me uh, today, is that uh, given the fact that we, uh, in the generally speaking, there are no shortages of amateurs with the schools that I've mm -hmm. been to, mm -hmm. um, and given the fact that it's not really a, a very involved experiment, I think they could have done it in groups, actually, mm -hmm. with each group having one amateur and actually observing these. Yes, they could also have used microchemistry <coughs> with the little <coughs> conductivity meters, yeah. uh -huh. uh, which is an alternative way of doing it in small groups. Yes. Do you have any comment about yeah. that, Khan? For me, it seemed like the teacher herself wasn't sure how the learners were going to manage the process right through. And mm -hmm. she was also trying out this method of predict, observe, and explain, um, which she felt she needed to control, you know, mm -hmm. at each and every step. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why she chose that. Because when they started, the first question she asked them about, the dis about prediction, for me, it didn't seem like the learners knew what distilled water is. Mm -hmm. Although later, when she asked about ions, there was some boy who indicated some knowledge about that. So although she was asking them questions, she was kind of responding to the first two, three, you know. Whereas some learners, you know, will be kind of reserved and if they know the answer. And, and, and your extroverts just give you any answer that comes into mind. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, that became a concern to me is that when the teacher was demonstrating, she was using uh, white, I mean sugar and, and salt. And for the learners that were at the back, those two would look the same. And maybe if mm -hmm. the, the containers would have been labeled to say this is mm -hmm. salt, this is sugar, mm -hmm. because by actually using them as they are, it might be still sugar being used twice or so. Mm -hmm. So an mm -hmm. advice that I could give in such a lesson if a teacher has to do a demonstration in such a large class, mm -hmm. maybe should label and, and put those uh, substances in big containers. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. The one good thing that she did do was she uh, had her apparatus mm. quite high up uh -huh. on, on a box. Um, so that, that was really good uh, to make it visible to the class. Mm -hmm. She could have also asked the group to stand around the mm. experiment. I yes. think I would have done that if I, if I only had one meter. Yes. Yes. I yes. think I would have asked the class to come to the front. Mm -hmm. And mm. I would actually have done that or also pick some of the learners to actually do some of the things like yes. give mm. one to one learner to do mm. the salt and yes. the other to learn to do the sugar, and et cetera. And take the readings. And take the readings, et cetera. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe ask one or two of them to bring some salt from home, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is not some chemical that comes out from some corner in the science laboratory. And mm. we're told that it's salt. Salt, and other than it's sugar. Uh, you know, that yeah. they see that they can make the association. This is the same sort of thing I put on my food daily. Mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully not too much, 
uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and, and yes, it, it's actually common sort and, and, and it actually demonstrated the experiment. I think that would have been fantastic if she'd done that. Mm -hmm. Would have been quite good too if yeah. she'd actually used tap water. Yeah, yeah. So instead with of the distilled with water. No, uh, not instead of, but to compare oh, with okay. the distilled water. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Do you think if, like I bring a very good uh, question here, if a teacher doesn't have distilled water, do you think a teacher won't be able to get the results that, that this teacher got? I think it's important to use distilled water mm -hmm. because the tap water would conduct electricity. And I think distilled water um, one can get from a petrol station. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, or one or could boiled use water. boiled water yes. from a kettle. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then what I liked about the teacher is actually developing the whole uh, 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 theory of learning, the POE. How mm. do you think this was done in this particular lesson? Yeah, I mean, she, she asked them to predict TMB, mm -hmm. you know, which, which is excellent, you know, and then she mm -hmm. tabulated their results. And mm -hmm. I might as well throw in here how well she used the, the, the board, you mm -hmm. know, and that she actually had a board well organized, you know, mm -hmm. tabulated their results. I only have one little criticism about that particular process. And uh, I know that one, one shouldn't generalize too much mm -hmm. uh, because there are time constraints as well on a teacher in a normal practical yeah. situation. Yeah, you know, true. this might be a bit hypothetical in that case. Uh, but in a, in, a, in a real life situation, uh, perhaps it would be good to have, you know, to, to actually have a situation where she's uh, asking them to write down mm -hmm. what their predictions are. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that would enable her to elicit more in terms of misconceptions that, and also another very important point, the degree of prevalence of those particular misconceptions can only probably be captured in a situation where learners are actually writing things down. Mm -hmm. I have my reservations about learners, you know, that sort of thing where they raise their hands and mm -hmm. actually give a response. Mm -hmm. Because you ask the next person and they think, oh, so-and-so said that, and that mm -hmm. might be the sharpest learner in the <laughs> class, <you know>? yes, <laughs> yes, so and so agree. they don't want to be on the wrong side of the boat, you see. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I think one one has one has. I think it was where it was used very well, and then she went to the observe, and then she went to the explain. So she went right through the whole spectrum of, of POE. Mm -hmm. It was well done, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. actually, the way in which she started the whole thing said, "Today, let us try and investigate yeah, this, yeah. because when we are doing science, we are trying to investigate, mm -hmm. and then in order to invest, investigate, we have to take the learners." through all those uh, exactly. theori theories, the POE. Mm -hmm. what, and was, what, came, sorry, what came out for me was that as she went on with that, you could trace that she was developing, building up the concept, mm -hmm. and there was some degree of learning taking place mm -hmm. amongst the learners themselves as their answers got more refined you know, towards mm -hmm. the end. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of conceptual development was captured by this teacher in mm -hmm. the entire lesson. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is there any other mm -hmm. thing that you'd like to talk about that mm -hmm. was interesting in this lesson, Liz? Yes, I think I think this teacher was particularly good on reinforcing the concepts. Mm -hmm. She summed mm -hmm. them up again at the end, focused on what ions were. Mm -hmm. yes. I think she was uh, very good on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were able to suggest some examples also of other ionic substances mm -hmm. that they think would react like that, like have, a, have, a, have an electric current flowing through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you, Kanye. That's all mm -hmm. we have for today. Uh, thank you, viewers at home. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. See you next time. Bye-bye.